Welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Solvable Mysteries podcast. My name is Yuras. I'm going to be your host today. We're going to be talking about the mysterious and quite baffling disappearance of Center County District Attorney Ray Grikar. Initially, when I found this case, I did not expect this case to become such a rabbit hole um, but it's very interesting. I will say that out of all of these cases recently, Ray's case um, probably fascinated me the most. For people who are not aware of Ray's case, it's a fairly high profile case because the man was the district attorney of uh, Center County, which was a county, well, still is a county in Pennsylvania. And he vanished very mysteriously. Let me tell you a little bit more about the case. Uh, for the introduction portion of this podcast. Ray Grikar is an American man who disappeared under mysterious circumstances on Friday, April 15th, 2005, after failing to return home from a road trip. At the time of his disappearance, Ray Grikar was 59 years of age and was working as the district attorney for Center County, Pennsylvania. Ray has green eyes and graying brown hair. He is around six foot tall in height and weighs around 172 pounds. When he was last seen, he was wearing a blue fleece jacket, blue jeans, and white sneakers. Ray Grucar was born in Cleveland. After he finished high school, he enrolled at the University of Dayton, where he became interested in studying law after working as an intern for the prosecutor's office. After graduating, Ray moved back to Cleveland to study law and subsequently took a job as a prosecutor for Cuyahoga County, specializing in prosecuting cases of rape and murder. Ray moved to State College, Pennsylvania in 1980, where his wife had taken a job at Pennsylvania State University. He started working as an assistant to Center County District Attorney David E. Grine after he offered Ray the job, and in 1985 when the incumbent District Attorney Robert Mix, who was the successor to David E. Grine, chose not to run for re-election, Ray ran instead and won the election, thus becoming the DA for Center County. Ray was successful at his position as the DA. He managed to get re-elected four times but had announced he would not run for re-election in the 2005 campaign. The most notable case Ray had to deal with during his tenure as the DA was a child sexual abuse charge against Penn State assistant football coach Jerry Sandusky in 1998. Ray had declined to press charges against Sandusky. Nonetheless, Sandusky was charged and convicted of multiple counts of sexual abuse 13 years later in 2012. Ray had announced that he would retire from practicing law in December of 2005, shortly after his 60th birthday. During his studies back in the University of Dayton, Ray met Barbara Gray, who he married in 1969. They adopted a baby girl named Lara in 1978. Ray and Barbara divorced in 1991. Ray married again in 1996, but divorced in 2001. In 2002, or in 2003, it's unclear, Grikar moved in with his girlfriend Patty Fornicola, an employee at his district attorney's office. According to Wikipedia, Ray was living with Patty in her childhood home in Belafonte at the time of his disappearance. Ray had experienced a tragic loss of his older brother, Roy Grikar, who went missing from his Westchester, Ohio home in May of 1996. Roy's body was found a week later in the Great Miami River. Authorities ruled his death a suicide. Ray Grikar disappeared on April 15, 2005. On this day, Ray had called his girlfriend Patty and informed her 
that he was driving through the Brush Valley area northeast of Center Hall. He never returned home that evening and Patty had reported him missing. The following day on April 16th, investigators managed to locate his car, which was a red Mini Cooper, in the parking lot of an antique store in Lewisburg called Street of Shops. Inside of the Mini Cooper, they found Ray's county-issued cell phone, but not his laptop computer, keys or wallet. No signs of foul play was found at the scene as well. A dark realization was made when police and Ray's family members noted that the location of Ray's car, which was adjacent to two bridges over the Susquehanna River, bore some similarities to the location of Ray's older brother's Roy's car when he committed suicide back in 1996. Authorities searched the riverbanks for any signs of Ray, but they didn't manage to find anything. Police also noted that a sniffer dog's behavior around where Ray's car was found suggested that he might have gotten into another vehicle with somebody else. Pennsylvania authorities asked the FBI to analyze Ray's bank accounts, credit card records, and cell phone records, but found no clues as to where he may have been. On July 30th of the same year, fishermen discovered Ray's county-issued laptop in the Susquehanna River beneath a bridge between Lewisburg and Milton, but its hard drive was missing. Divers searched the area of the river near where the laptop was found, but nothing else was uncovered. Another clue was uncovered when on October 26th of the same year, 2005, a mother and son who were practicing skipping stones across the surface of the Susquehanna River found a hard drive. It was about a hundred yards from where the laptop had been located earlier, and was sitting in shallow water about 12 feet away from the store. The hard drive had been submerged in water for months and was in extremely poor condition. Unfortunately, investigators were unable to recover any useful data from this hard drive. The FBI also looked at it but determined that it was too damaged for them to uncover anything. Center County spent thousands of dollars to have the hard drive analyzed by Kroll on track, a Minnesota company that had successfully recovered information from hard drives that had been on the space shuttle Columbia when it disintegrated during re-entry back in 2003, but even they were unable to recover anything useful from this hard drive. More clues were released by Belafonte police in April of 2009, Four years after Ray's disappearance, police had revealed that before Ray disappeared, someone had used his home computer at his and girlfriend's Patty's for Nicola's residence to perform internet searches on topics such as, quote, how to wreck a hard drive, end quote, quote, how to fry a hard drive, end quote and, quote, water damage to a notebook computer, end quote. It's presumed that Ray himself made these internet searches shortly before he vanished. Ray was declared dead in absentia on July 25th, 2011. Bizarrely, the following day, law enforcement in Utah arrested a man resembling Ray on a misdemeanor charge who refused to reveal his identity, Center County authorities sent copies of Ray's fingerprints to Utah and they did not match. This man was later identified by law enforcement and turned out he was not Ray Gricar. At the time of this recording, Ray has been missing for more than 17 years. Okay guys, uh, as always, this wouldn't be Solvable Mysteries podcast if we wouldn't jump to the map initially. So um, before we get into the other points of interest this week, um, 
Oh yeah, one other thing I want to quickly mention is that uh, for everyone who are who is very interested in maybe the most relevant details regarding the Ray Grecar's disappearance, I really suggest checking out um, the podcast called Final what's it called final argument yeah final argument is a very good podcast um it's basically uh you know produced by this reporter lady who apparently grew up in the same county as rig Ricard was from and uh you know this this reporter essentially got the ha got her pause essentially on the case file i don't know how she got um her hands on the case file she spoke to uh the media and she said that she will not uh, tell anyone how she got the case file because she wants to protect her sources as a reporter. I can definitely respect that. Um, also, uh, the case file consists of thousands of pages. And if you make a one-time payment at regricard.com, you can actually um, get uh, you know, uh, get like some sort of a membership for that podcast and you can get like exclusive content. And I think one of the pieces of exclusive content is that massive uh, case file. Now, I knew that I wouldn't have the time to go over all of those uh, pages right there, but it's interesting to know that someone has the case file. And, you know, if you are, if you have 20 bucks laying around, you could always go to that website and purchase the case file yourself for sure. Uh, another thing I want to mention about that podcast, the uh, final argument, um, uh, the final argument podcast goes into some interesting theories and obviously the lady who produces that show definitely has um, like thousands of times more research hours than I do. I literally have just a few days of research under my belt regarding Ray Ricard's disappearance. So. Um, but she goes into interesting theories, theories that I don't necessarily agree with. So, well, I, I'm not saying that I don't agree with, but it seems to me that she's stretching a little bit in some of them. Now, I believe currently the podcast has only released six episodes and there are more episodes going that are, will be released uh, in the future. I've listened to like maybe four of them. Uh, and yeah, she kind of goes into the whole... Uh, Jerry Sandusky connection so far and uh, you know it's it definitely interesting uh, thoughts but I guess I'm just gonna give you guys uh, an overview and I, I think my own personal opinions regarding this case this week. So um, jumping back to the map right because uh, it's it wouldn't be a solvable mysteries podcast if we wouldn't look at the map but the map is very nice this week. Um, we have very concise and structured uh, you know view i guess area points on the map i would like to begin with uh belafonte the town where uh you know rig ricar was living with his girlfriend the girlfriend's name i had to look up really quickly was patty fornicola i believe uh, yes that is her name indeed um they were living at uh, this residence right here on the map, this was, I believe, Patty's home, but I've researched a little bit, and it, I believe that Ray actually made, like, some sort of mortgage payments for, uh, for this home, and if we zoom in, we don't really have the exact uh, house, and there is no uh, street view as well, so we can't really look at the, the house itself. Um, this is the Center County Courthouse where, uh, you know, uh, Ray Gricar and his girlfriend uh, Patty both worked at you know Gray being uh, not Gray uh, Ray being the DA of the county and all and now ooh this is a bit annoying on 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 uh, the Google Maps right uh, some technical difficulties but now we're back on the map and um, I want to quickly note down this area right here as well uh, this point right here. Uh, this is apparently where Ray uh, made that uh, phone call to the courthouse, and this was interesting because this phone call. Uh, and let me let me quickly, uh, I guess, backtrack a little bit and give you the context a little bit. So um, on April fifteenth, when, when Ray Gricar went missing he actually i think woke up late or something like that and patty uh, for nicola his girlfriend woke him up and and she told him to like yo get ready for work because it's a work day but he was like i'm gonna do hooky whatever that means and he will skip 
work today and it was normal i guess because uh the man did work many hours it was reported so he was just taking it easy on this particular day and he said that he's gonna take his red mini cooper for a drive um, which he often did it wasn't something out of the ordinary for ray Ricard to do so so ray stayed in bed while patty went to work in the courthouse now while in the courthouse, I believe Patty, for some reason, worked at the reception because she was um, filling in for someone else. I believe maybe the courthouse's reception lady. And I think, uh, you know, Ray Gricar, he actually went on a drive as he woke up. I'm not really sure when, but I would assume somewhere around like 11 a.m. because um, he left his residence in Belafonte. Uh, and then at 11.15 a.m., he made a call to the reception of the courthouse. And I don't think he expected to find his girlfriend, Patty, on the other end. because but, but he was calling to get a hold of Patty or at least to notify Patty. So I think his intentions when he made that phone call at 11.15 a.m., he wanted to inform Patty that he was on the road. Let's see, which road was this? He was on Pennsylvania Road 192. I'm going to highlight this road really quickly for everyone who is watching this on the YouTube channel. He was on this road and he was heading uh, to the eastward direction for a drive in his red Mini Cooper. And he wanted to let let patty know that he will not be home in time to feed the dog something like that or like take the dog out somewhere because they had the dog together patty and ray but their dog apparently had some health problems something along those lines so he makes the phone call and he proceeds to drive now uh, as the day goes on he does not return home and patty calls uh police and informs them about the missing DA Ray Gricar and the following day if we're gonna stay on the map really quickly here guys we're moving to Lewisburg a town uh, actually I have a let me let me find this thing there we go this is the this is the Google Maps distance uh, if you would take uh, Pennsylvania route 192 from Belafonte to Lewisburg it would take you around an hour and 11 minutes and it's around 55 miles in total so Ray drove 55 miles in the eastward direction apparently because the following day on April 16th one day into his disappearance his car was located his car was located right here in the parking lot adjacent to the antique store streets of shops right this right here i want to uh, note down this is the antique store uh ray was familiar with this particular antique store it wasn't the first time he's been here so him um you know leaving leaving the car here wasn't uh anything out of the ordinary now i don't think we have a clear-cut answer whether or not he actually entered the antique store streets street of shops uh, located on the map as we can see right here but there were uh, sightings of him with a tall brunette woman inside of the store and it's been heavily speculated that maybe um, Ray Gricard was on an affair for some reason uh, also let's remember that within his car that was found abandoned in this adjacent parking lot next to the antique store there were uh, cigarette ashes on the passenger side's floors like on the passenger side uh, of the car uh, on the floor there were cigarette ashes no cigarette butts uh, meaning that uh, we don't have um, any dna because you can't really collect any dna from cigarette ashes uh, if there were cigarette butts though we could actually uh, get some dna but apparently we do not know who was smoking 
apparently it seemed like someone was smoking inside of Ray's red Mini Cooper. But the interesting thing here to notice that Ray was heavily against smoking, and uh, this was corroborated by his co-workers, etc. Apparently, he didn't even like people smoking around the courthouse, so he was kind of protected, protective about that. And so finding, um, so fi finding cigarette ash in the pat on the floor. Uh, on of the passenger side on, on his red Mini Cooper was definitely very weird because it was reported that Ray did not allow anyone to smoke in his car as well. So uh, that was interesting, right? And uh, lastly, the, the other points are that let me get the dates here correct as well. Yeah, so uh, more than three months later, uh, more than three months later on July 30th, uh, Fisherman found his laptop uh, under this bridge that connects Lewisburg and Milton. So it was somewhere uh, below the reinforcing structure of the bridge and why fishermen located it is because apparently the river itself has became like there, there was less water in the river and it was easier to spot these items and then lastly i would like to mention that um more than six months later on october 26th uh a a hard drive from that laptop was also recovered uh, very close uh, to the laptop's location and um, these are the two final clues physical clues that we have in this case so far i found this uh, interesting timeline uh, that i guess gives us some good timestamps uh, i want to go over it uh, this timeline uh, I think I will definitely leave a link to this in this podcast description, at least on the YouTube channel for sure. Um, I guess it will give us a better picture of the, just in general, the the days leading up to his disappearance and uh, after the the you know the aftermath that also followed. So the, this timeline begins. In 2004, when Ray purchased a red Mini Cooper, so that car that you know he was last seen in, and that car was actually a gift for his girlfriend Patty for Nicola, and the vehicle is titled in her name. That's something interesting. A new desktop computer is also purchased for the home, and reportedly Ray's laptop is not being used and is kept in for Nicola's upstairs closet. For Nicola has her own laptop at work and access to another. On January 2005, girlfriend Patty for Nicola changed from a victim advocate to a clerical position at the Center County Courthouse and moves into the same area where Ray works. On March 9, 2005, Ray described as, quote, not with it, end quote, by a colleague at a death penalty hearing as Ray states he would not be present at the time of trial. Family say he had planned vacation for that time period. March 31st, 2005, Ray and Attorney General Tom Corbett announce a large heroin bust, naming several individuals and, and the key player, Taji Verbal Lee. On April 2000, in, some, sometime in April 2005, girlfriend Patty for Nicola states that Ray was working hard and taking more naps during this time period and that she had suggested to see a doctor. Police later get a warrant for uh, Ray's medical records and find no history of depression or any medical issues. April 11th, 2005. Ray described as, quote, deeply distraught during this week by a colleague. April 14th, 2005, Ray attends a prison board meeting at approximately 8.30 a.m. He is later described as acting normally at this meeting. Same day, April 14th, daughter Lara Gricar phones Ray from Washington and says their conversation was normal. Same day, April 14th, Ray's office door is forcefully closed several times mid-afternoon per a colleague. Grikar 
meaning Greg Ricard, had a habit of forcefully closing his door per a colleague. I'm not really sure what this means, though. Um, some more uh, some more timeline events on April 14th. Um, Gricar, Greg Ricard, and girlfriend Patty for Nicola are seen walking in Talleyrand Park by a Center County Commissioner approximately 5.30 p.m. Gricard is described as depressed looking as neither he nor his girlfriend respond to a compliment of being a perfect couple. The commissioner cannot recall what Ray and Fornicola were wearing during this walk, office attire or casual clothing. Same day, April 14th, Ray is seen in courthouse surveillance video entering the courthouse at approximately 6.15 p.m. to do some work and is seen leaving at 9.15 p.m. He is wearing blue jeans, sneakers, and a blue fleece jacket. He is not carrying his laptop computer. This is the same outfit he is reportedly wearing when missing. April 15th, girlfriend Patty for Nicola states that Ray woke up and told her he was going to take one, one and a half day off from work, and then he went back to sleep. She left him a note instructing that if he went anywhere, to let her know so that she could make arrangements uh, to let the dog out at noon, same day, April 15th, a call is placed to girlfriend Patty for Nicola at the Center County Courthouse at approximately 11.30 a.m. from Ray's cell phone, indicating that he is on Highway 192 and that he is taking the other one and a half of the day off from work and that he would not be home at noon to let the dog out. Several other office employees were out of the office or not working that day. Same day, April 15th, uh, girlfriend Pat for Nicola arrives home from work at approximately 5 p.m. and Ray has not left her a note as she reportedly expected and she heads to the gym. Normally, she and Ray would always go out to eat at the Gamble Mill Inn each Friday. It's reported that for Nicola thought he had maybe stopped somewhere to eat when he wasn't home at this time. April 15th, uh, same day. Girlfriend Patty for Nicola does not phone Ray's family or friends, but phones her brother, Tom for Nicola, at approximately 8.30 p.m as she is worried because Ray has still not arrived home. Same day, April 15th, girlfriend Patty for Nicola phones Belafonte police at approximately 11.30 p.m. to report Ray as missing. Policeman Holiday contacts Chief of Police Dwayne Dixon, who advises to send a message to other police departments. April 16th, the following day, Belafonte policeman Darrell Za... Zakanji, Zakangi, I'm sorry, is assigned the case and begins working the case at approximately 11.30 a.m. with a bolo, be on a lookout, that's in police jargon, and initiates air and ground searches for Center Hall to Madisonburg along Highway 192. And girlfriend Patty for Nicola notifies uh, Ray's family members by phone that he did not come home the prior evening. Clerical staff at the courthouse provides Ray's computer password and police look at his office computer for any signs or clues. It's reported that Patty for Nicola is monitoring Ray's email accounts as she knows the password. Same day, April 16th, a state trooper finds the red Mini Cooper parked across the street from Street of Shops Antiques Flea Market in Lewisburg, um, Pennsylvania. A familiar place to Grecar and girlfriend Patty for Nicola. At approximately 6.30 p.m. with Ray's cell phone turned off inside, well, I mean, the, the cell phone was turned off inside, the car is taken to the Milton State Police barracks for forensic processing. Following day, April 17th, the red Mini Cooper is returned to girlfriend Patty for Nicola. Belfonte Police Chief Dwayne Dixon says there, there that no strangers prints were found in the car, a small amount of cigarette ashes found on the passenger floorboard. 
still April 17th, search dogs are brought to Lewisburg and find no trail of Ray from where his vehicle had been parked at the street uh, of shops, antique store. Even the witnesses claimed to have seen him in surrounding areas there. The dog circled the area where the car had been parked. Dogs did not find Ray's scent and the street of shops where witnesses claimed to have seen him, nor did they found his scent at the river where the laptop and hard drive was later located. Till April 17th, girlfriend Patty for Nicola determines for, uh, determines for Belfonte police that Ray's County issued laptop is missing from the upstairs closet at their home. The case and peripherals are still in the closet. Police do not fingerprint the case. The case as in laptop's case. April 18th, police learned that the vehicle had secret compartments that were not checked at the Milton barracks. They checked them after the car has already been returned to Patty for Nicola but find nothing. April 14, 18th, same day, FBI is asked to assist in the case. They find no credit card or banking activity by Ray. They review hundreds of hours of surveillance tapes from surrounding businesses, but do not find any photos of Ray. Same day, April 18th, a Milton State Police profiler meets with girlfriend Patty for Nicola, Stephen Sloan, and others, and conducts the, and concludes, I'm sorry, that Ray committed suicide. So this was concluded in the 18th, so basically three days into his disappearance, that he, he had committed suicide. April 20th, a massive search of the river at Lewisburg is conducted with police, divers, boats, and cadaver dogs, but they find no trace of Ray. July 13th, it's announced that girlfriend Patty for Nicola will be taking a polygraph. July 15th, it's announced that girlfriend Patty for Nicola had nothing to do with the disappearance per polygraph questioning. It is reported that Belafonte police sent the polygraph results for overview and their awaiting official results. July 30th, two fishermen find Ray's laptop lodged against a bridge support under the bridge over the Susquehanna, sorry, Susquehanna River at Lewisburg. The hard drive has been removed from the laptop. September 15th, it's announced that daughter Lara Grikar also had nothing to do with the disappearance as per polygraph questioning. October 1st, the hard drive is found upstream from where the laptop was found, near a park and abandoned railroad bridge. This is interesting because I believe in the other timeline that I've read it was found on April on October 26th. So I'm not really sure which is the exact uh, date of you know the location of the hard drive. January 17th, police say that they are leaning more towards foul play as opposed to walk away or suicide. January 2007, numerous sightings of Ray cannot be corroborated with any other evidence. Der Daryl Zakanji comments that as more time passes that it looks more like a possible homicide. He is then removed from the case. Ooh. February 2008. It's reported that there were, in fact, no identifiable fingerprints actually found in the Mini Cooper by Matt Rickard, who now handles the investigation. It's never been reported if any prints were found on Ray's cell phone. July 2008. Officials in surrounding counties criticized the Ray's investigation. Friends and DA Bob Burner believes that Ray was murdered, Bob suggests that the hard drive be sent to crawl on track to see if any data can be recovered. It is determined to be too damaged. October 2008. It was reported that Ray had inquired in the past about how to erase a hard drive in preparation for retirement and retiring his county-owned laptop back to the county. Uh, returning, I'm sorry. Uh, and girlfriend Patty for Nicola had told police that Ray had a software box for hard drive erasing software. Ray had 
yeah, had a software box for hard drive erasing software at one time in their home, but the software and or the box were never located. Michael Madeira said there was no evidence it was ever purchased, ever there or ever used. April 2009, Matt Ricard said it is still very much an active investigation. April 14th of 2009, law enforcement released info that Ray had done various searches on his home computer on ways to destroy a hard drive about a month before he vanished. However, they have no way of proving who actually used the computer. Law enforcement discovered these computer searches in approximately October 2006 during a PSP review of the case. They also claimed that the hard drive erasing software had indeed been purchased. November 2009, Stacy Parks Miller is elected as the new district attorney of Center County and vows to tear through the case file on Ray's disappearance. It was previously reported that there was only a, quote, a banker's box of evidence, end quote, on the case. She fires Ray's best friend and assistant DA, Stephen Stallone, Sl Sloan, I'm sorry. Girlfriend party for Nicola transfers to a position with the DUI court. March 2010, nothing new has been reported yet on the status of Stacy Parks Miller's review. Bob, butchering this guy's name, Bob, Buchner, well, I mean, it says Buchner, Bob Buchner comments on the Daily Times that international walk away theories are nonsense and that, and that common sense and evidence points to Ray having committed suicide or being a victim of homicide. He previously stated several times that he believes Ray was murdered. Uh, March 31st, 2010, it's announced that new district uh, attorney Stacy Parks Miller has assembled a task force com uh, comprised of former and new investigators to work the case. She states that after reviewing the case file and evidence that she was surprised to learn that there was much more to the past investigation than what the public was privy to. That what had been reported was only quote the tip of the iceberg she states that her personal opinion in that homicide is the least likely scenario but that nothing is off the table the fact that none of the reported witness sightings of of ray were ever confirmed is repeated February 15, 2011, Investigation Discovery Disappeared series to feature Ray's case on February 28, 2011. Investigation Discovery Disappeared show in four segments. And then April 15, 2011, six years anniversary of Ray's disappearance passes by quietly. His local newspaper doesn't even do an article. I'd like to also go over some videos, some some video footage that I um, specifically took out when I was researching this case. Um, I would like to start off with maybe the interesting points that I found on the Nancy Grace's segment regarding this. So I'm just going to play a little bit of it. I hope this is not going to be copyright because, uh, uh, you know, that would be definitely unfortunate. Let's play it. Some of the same divers that searched the Susquehanna River in Lewisburg back in April were at it again Saturday and Sunday, looking for the hard drive to Ray Grecar's laptop computer. There's a better indication that he had it with him, but we go back to, again, why did he have it with him? Was it something he was working on? Uh, did somebody force him to bring it with him? Or did he meet somebody and things went bad on something he was working on? And they, they did something with Ray and they took the laptop because they felt there was evidence with it. Because it was covered and filled with river sediment, investigators believe the laptop was tossed into the water around the same time Grecar went missing. It stayed there until Saturday morning when two fishermen saw the laptop and pulled it out with a net. They noticed a sticker that says property of Center County and had heard about the Grecar search, so they took it right to the state police. Investigators say any fingerprints were probably washed away. How did divers miss the computer when they searched this same spot three and a half months ago? They tell us this spring the river was faster and deeper. Because of the conditions, I, th I think the chance of us finding 
any of them small items would have been null and void. We were just looking for gray. Investigators don't think the hard drive fell out because the computer wasn't damaged. Instead, they suspect someone took it out, possibly Greekar, to hide his plans to disappear or someone who was covering their tracks after harming the DA. They pulled out a little jewelry box they found. They found some money, you know, a couple coins, and they were finding bottle caps and cans and stuff. I mean, the clarity was really good, and, you know, we're really confident that Ray's body is not in, in that portion of the river. Okay, yeah, so this was the first, uh, I guess, snippet from the Nancy Grace's show, and the thing that I liked about it, because... Basically, the people that were talking on this uh, segment right now, they kind of gave us uh, some more, shed some more light on the general, let's say, conditions of the river, Susquehanna River, where his laptop was located. And I want to quickly zoom in to the map again. And I think it's very, it's, it's baffling because I was trying to figure out where, like, okay, so this could either go a few ways. Um, either Ray has discarded of the laptop or someone else threw the laptop away. Now, just because of the, the fact that Ray was actually the one who was, well, I strongly suspect that, you know, a month prior to his disappearance, Ray was actually the one who was researching how to dis how to get rid of a hard drive. I think he threw the hard drive away. Like, that's the only logical explanation that I have. Uh, and now the hard drive was removed from the laptop. So uh, clearly it wasn't removed when it was already uh, discarded. It was, you know, both of those two items, like the hard drive and the laptop, were thrown away presumably at the same time, but they were already disconnected from one another when it was done. So I was thinking, where could he have thrown it from? Because um, just for some context, this is the Susquehanna River on the map, and it is flowing from north to south. This is the, you know, the flow of the river. So it could have been the case that maybe he actually, and, and it was, you know, the laptop itself was kind of, let me actually try to zoom out somewhere. The laptop itself was somewhere stuck close to the support structure of the bridge and the hard drive was found somewhere here in the more shallow areas when a mother and a son were actually, you know, like do like just hanging around and they uncovered it right here. So I was thinking maybe there's a chance that he actually committed suicide and before he committed suicide, he maybe was on this bridge right here and he threw the laptop in the water and, uh, you know, threw the hard drive right after. The hard drive got stuck somewhere here and the laptop got stuck somewhere close uh, to the supporting structure of the bridge that connects, you know, Lewisburg and Milton. Let's go back to the Nancy Grace show. Of course, tracking dogs were brought in. They confirmed that Grey Car, of course, had been in his car. Their behavior suggests that Grey Car then got into another car. Typically, when dogs make that suggestion, they follow the scent to a certain spot and then they immediately quit. And it's, for instance, at a road or a driveway or a parking deck. There have been I believe the whole um, the whole situation with uh, the tracking dogs losing his scent is probably a red herring, because if he got into a car, into someone else's car in this parking lot, then how would we explain his laptop and hard drive in the Susquehanna River? Who threw it out then? I mean, there are, there are scenarios, of course, but to me, it just doesn't seem likely that he actually got into someone else's car. I still lean towards the suicide in this case. There have been over 300 alleged sightings of the county prosecutor. Yes, over 300 tips, um, to name a few. He was spotted at a Chili's, and the person was so convinced it was Greek heart, they took photos of him. And I saw the photos. It looked very much like Ray Greek heart. It was not Ray Greek heart. It was investigated. He was then spotted at nearby Wilkes Bar. 
Pennsylvania. A retired police officer thought he spotted Greek car. And possibly the one that was the most unique, let me say, was he was spotted. Ray Greekhart was spotted in the studio audience of an Oprah Winfrey taping, the Oprah show. Right, a, a, a tipster spotted Greekhart watching Oprah sitting in the audience. Well, it did not turn out to be Greekhart. Yeah, of course it was not Greek car. He was not in the Oprah Winfrey's, uh, you know, taping. That's a fact. Um, yeah, and I know I already showed my hand a little bit with the theories here that I'm leaning towards the suicide, and I will explain why. Uh, I believe the next uh, segment of the video assets that I want to play for you guys today, maybe will explain my reasoning a little bit here. This is from uh, Dateline NBC. I extracted a few interesting clips from their segment on Ray's disappearance. Let's listen. But if the body was in the Susquehanna River in Vatican... But I, I, I'm hoping I found what Susquehanna was actually referring to. Down the river the way, the water just hits the dam and it grinds around. He could have got wedged down in there underneath and just been chewing the pieces, unfortunately. In Okay, uh, so let's jump to the map. What exactly is the dam that this Saskiahani guy is referring to? So once again, we're on the map right now. And uh, the closest dam, and let's remember that the flow of the river is moving southwards on the Saskiahana River. And the closest dam would be this thing right here. It's the Shemokin Dam. Um, it's somewhere where I think well I'm not a damn expert let's just quickly and there isn't like a good view angle on the map here that we could kind of analyze the I guess the you know the dam itself I'm not a damn expert for sure I'm not really certain uh, I'm not really certain uh, where would this I mean this looks like it's not passable but like there's a ton of water right now we're looking at the Susquehanna River I'm not really sure which time of the year this uh, Google Street View was taken but there's a lot of water and uh, if Ray did jump if Ray did let's let's just look at it one more time if Ray did jump off of this bridge and I don't know if this is a logical theory I'm not even sure if you can actually get onto this bridge uh, but if Ray jumped from this bridge right here, if Ray actually went somewhere on this bridge that we can see right now on the uh, on the on the street view, and he jumped into the water, and he flown down. Like there's a ton of water. Like why do we think that he wouldn't have flown away somewhere? Like way down there the thing is his uh, laptop and the hard drive were found close by so um you know his body probably would have also been found close by but i think there is a i mean there is a likely chance that his body could have traveled all the way to that other dam that i mentioned now really quickly want to also bring out another thing that i found interesting in this um case was the fact that if we will go to the google earth uh, app not on the website but you know on the actual app we can see if we go back in time we actually have a satellite footage from april 2005 guys this is literally april 2005 this was taken the same month as as he vanished and yeah, there seems to be a lot of water here. So, uh, you know, could he have, uh, if he jumped from this bridge, would his body travel uh, south? This is the big question for me personally this week, for sure. And this is that dam. This is that dam also from uh, 2005, April. Uh, you know, doesn't look like it has changed by that much. Definitely seems like it's still present, uh, even in April of 2005. 
in the pieces, unfortunately. He, 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 he may be hooked up with this lady, and, you know, he just felt bad, didn't want to call Patty. Did you check hotel and motel records to find out if a couple had stayed in the Lewisburg area around that time? We uh, sent troopers out. So this, uh, I guess, kind of indicates that um, Ray was not on an affair. And once again, I would like to say that um, when I looked into it, the whole multiple women that he was apparently cited with, I kind of think that was uh, ready hearings for sure in this case. Three theories. That's what investigators were left with to explain what happened to Ray Gricar. What Financial investigators from the FBI could find no evidence that Ray was planning to move money. There was nothing to indicate that Ray was planning to walk out of his very successful life. If Ray yep. Lastly, I had to um, show this clip as well from the I-Team cold case. Um, let's listen in. This, this is going to be very interesting, at least for me it was. With this I-Team follow-up report. Andy? Well, good evening, Mark. Robert Buner, the former Montour County District Attorney who serves as DA for 20 years there, reached out to the I-Team after our report aired on Tuesday. He says he's had information for quite some time that he believes could help solve this mystery surrounding the disappearance of Ray Gricar. Complete heartbreak that this mystery, this enigma has not been resolved. Robert Buner says he has researched the disappearance of his good friend Ray Gricar since the early days of the investigation. In fact, he has a file filled with information that he has collected and says he's confident this information, as well as other information already gathered by investigators over the last 15 years, could lead to answers. I strongly believe that Ray Gricar was the victim of foul play. I felt that from the earliest days of the uh, investigation. An investigation that began to unfold on April 15, 2005. Gricar told his longtime girlfriend that he was going for a ride. He took the day off that day. His red Mini Cooper was found the next day parked outside the street shops, an antique mall in Lewisburg in Union County. His cell phone was inside the car. It was turned off. His laptop was found two weeks later in the nearby Susquehanna River. The hard drive was also missing. It, too, was later found in the same river, but data could not be retrieved from it. Buner tells the I-Team. I strongly believe that there are several people that are um, still alive, who know what happened to Ray Gricar, know how he was lured to Lewisburg, and know what happened after the, he was in Lewisburg. Buner says over the years, people... That was the interesting part for me. So this guy, he thinks essentially that there are some people directly responsible with Ray's disappearance, and apparently he knows who did it. So I had to mention this. And I guess this concludes the... I guess, video portion uh, of this podcast. To finish off the podcast this week, I would like to go over a few Reddit posts that I found interesting. Um, the first one that comes from the username on Reddit called PCH Fusionist. He says, in my opinion, this is one of, one of the most baffling disappearances of all time. And I'm surprised that some of the strangest elements of the case often aren't discussed. We have to talk about the book 2020 Vision, the similarities between a character in that book who faked his death and Grikar are uncanny, including one showstopper that I'll save for last. Let's review a few others first. The book's events happen on April 15th of the year 1995, 2020 and 2040. Grikar's disappearance happened on April 15, 2005. The character resembling Grikar had cigarette ash left behind in his car. Grikar's car had cigarette ash in it, even though he didn't smoke and did not like others to do so around him. The character in the novel drives from State College, uh, Pennsylvania, the fictionalized version of it in the book, East into a valley. Grikar did the same thing. Ready for the punchline? Grikar consulted on the book. I'll add to this that Grikar is of Slovenian descent and visited the former Yugosla Yugoslavia during the Cold War, which was not easy to do. 
Also, did you know that the Secret Service got involved with this disappearance? That's highly unusual. Keep in mind that he's just a DA, and not someone whose disappearance would have the Secret Service interested at all. I got this information by listening to the True Crime Garage podcast on Grikar, where they had James Reiner as a guest. He's written a lot about this case. I know that Reiner is controversial, but his facts check out. I highly recommend that podcast episode for ev anyone interested in this case. While I was, uh, you know, browsing through Reddit, I also found this interesting um, Reddit, let's say, thread. Uh, basically, it says that I'm a reporter investigating a cold case of Ray Gricar, a district attorney who went missing 15 years ago today. Ask me anything. And uh, as proof, he has his own uh, image here. And uh, I liked one of his replies in this Reddit thread. When asked uh, which theory this you know reporter is leaning towards the most, and this guy already had, let's remember, many hours into this research, um, he commented, most investigators dismiss the walkaway theory, and I tend to think it's the least likely. The two that I found most convincing and which I explore at some depth in the story that ran today, uh, regarding speaking in regards to his um, news article, are homicide and suicide. Since you asked about suicide, I'll focus on that. For context, Ray's brother Roy went missing in 1996 with his car parked by the Great Miami River in Dayton, Ohio, which Ray's nephew Tony found eerily similar to the scene where Ray's red Mini Cooper was found nine years later. Back in 1996, Ray served as the main facilitator, coordinating with local police and providing statements to the media. Now, Roy had a history of depression. The best that I can tell, Ray had no such history. That doesn't mean it wasn't there and everyone I spoke to described Ray as a fairly private guy. He had a mischievous side and he could deliver a great oral argument, but he seldom opened up about his feelings or private life. Most of Ray's colleagues and friends say he was intensely committed to his job. And they know that retirement can often bring mixed emotions and there is a genetic component to mental illness. Could Ray have privately suffered from depression or some other ailment? On the other hand, Ray was also known to be intensely devoted to his daughter. Some of those close to him believe he would not never intentionally inflict the pain of a suicide or unexplained walkaway on her or on his nephews, who would be confronted with a scene eerily reminiscent to their father's death. There's further evidence of what behavior Ray exhibited before his disappearance for a full accounting of that and details from Roy's 1996 disappearance, I encourage you to read my story. Another Reddit post that I found interesting comes from uh, Mr. B182 and he says, I think the Ray Gricar case is fascinating. I'm fairly cleanly split between the homicide, suicide, walking away theories. I saw this article yesterday from the local paper. What are your theories on the case? And he cites some quotes from the article. According to the informant, the cellmate and this other man who is still alive were contracted to kidnap and murder Ray as a means of slowing down a drug investigation. In 2005, Ray and then Attorney General Tom Corbett were investigating a massive drug ring based in and around State College, which was announced one month prior to Ray's disappearance. Based on the inform informant's recollections, though it's not clear if this investigation and the one that the that may have prompted Ray's murder were the same. A female acquaintance of the two men who is now also deceased was paid to lure Ray to the street of shops with the premise of connecting him with information about the drug ring. The informant said Ray and this woman drove to a nearby hotel. The cellmate didn't specify which, where the partner surprised Ray broke his neck and hauled his body into the trunk of a waiting car. 
Then, as his story goes, the two men drove Ray's body to a remote game land and dumped his body down an abandoned mineshaft submerged in water. And then I think the last thing that I found very interesting uh, this week when I was looking at, at uh, Ray's disappearance, um, you know, I listened to the podcast called Final argument um, where that lady is investigating Ray's disappearance and she brought out these two uh, sketches um, basically they were placed in the case file but they have never been released to the public so there is no context about them but it's this sketch of a man well presumably it's a man but I found uh, a few redditors on reddit kind of conversating whether or not this is even a man and the uh, film cricket on reddit says that who says that's supposed to be a man it can definitely be a woman and then uh, a few other commenters on reddit do agree with him and then i was looking at at the at this particular sketch and yeah i mean it looks like a this could be a woman as well or a man it's really hard to say to say to be honest and yeah uh, i think i'll be wrapping up uh, the episode this week. I know this uh, week's episode was uh, a little bit like strict on the structure um, and uh, I don't know just the fact that I guess there are so many angles here and so many things to look at I kind of felt the pressure to um, try to make it uh, very professional or at least as professional as I possibly could and I don't know I hope it doesn't come out uh, clunky or anything like that because that's definitely something that I'm trying to avoid on the podcast um, really quickly just before I wrap it up I want to give my take so the way I'm leaning towards in this case I believe that Ray committed suicide personally, well, but I'm definitely not sold on this idea, but if I had to bet, I would say that Ray probably committed suicide. Why I think that way is because his brother has committed suicide, even though he didn't believe that his brother committed suicide. I think it was at least declared legally that it was a suicide or something like that. So. Um, if that's the case, then, you know, he, his brother already committed suicide and then him committing suicide 20 years later wouldn't be that, that much out of the question, I think, especially because he was sleepy. He was reportedly being very sleepy uh, the days before he disappeared. Also, he was about to retire and he was really devoted to his job. And the way I kind of see this happening, well, in my eyes, he probably drove to this parking lot next to the street of shops. He probably went on this bridge because he knew the area. He definitely has been here before, so he knew the bridge. He went here. Um, the reason for disposing on, of the hard drive and the, uh, and the laptop, I definitely think he had intentions to do this because he did look up how to do this online just before he vanished. And why he uh, threw it into the water and why did he discard of it well maybe there was some personal information that after his death after his suicide he wouldn't want to come out to the public maybe it was some sort of information that uh, would make like some personal information that he just wanted to take uh, with himself to the grave with himself didn't want people to find out and there could be like some personal emails or some files and I could fully understand that if I you know what I mean, have a long career in as a district attorney, I would probably try to, you know, do that the same to like maybe preserve my reputation. If if that was the case, um, then if he jumped into the water, once again, as we listened to one of those, um, you know, video assets that I've played earlier in today's podcast, um, you know, one of the law enforcement, uh, one of the police officers uh, that spoke on that, they said that there's a chance that he could have ran like his body could have um you know flown away into a dam some sort of a dam and i would assume it's this shamokin dam and maybe in the dam his body just got crushed into pieces so that's where i'm gonna be leaning towards um i mean yeah but anything's possible as i've said guys i'm very curious uh to find out what you guys think uh, of today of this week's episode and just in general uh, what do you think happened to Ray Gricar I had a very good time researching this case and uh, as always can't wait to be back next week 
Um, I'm not really sure what kind of episode I'm going to be doing next week, but we'll see. And until then, I hope everyone is going to, you know, have a nice rest of the week. And I'll catch you on the next week's episode. Peace out, guys. Peace out.